Hi. Well, let's check out the circuit of this Marshall Super Lead. Uh, let's start off where well, you plug it into the wall. You got AC 120 volts. Uh, this is transformed in a power transformer to a higher voltage level, which we need to to power the uh, the tubes. And uh, furthermore, we need the direct current rather than alternating current. So therefore, we have a, a rectifier that uh, does that. Um, in this case, the Marshall Super Lead has a solid state rectifier, uh, a bridge, a diode bridge rectifier. And there, there is also an AC current that heats the tube cathodes. Uh, from a rectifier you might expect uh, perfect direct current, uh, but that's not how, how it works. It rather uh, inverts the negative part of the signal, creating this kind of waveform, ripple, uh, uh, and that has a negative, negative uh, effect uh, on the sound. So therefore, uh, in the high voltage portion uh, of the overall circuit, we introduce uh, a number of components, a choke and some filter caps to filter out and smooth out the ripple of the DC signal. Well, as you probably know, Marshall Superlit has four inputs. Uh, and here we're using the uh, input one and the high level one. Uh, and the first thing we encounter then are the grid resistors. Uh, one in series, the grid stopper, and one in parallel, the grid uh, leak resistor. And the purpose of those are, are basically to regulate the signal that goes into the tube, uh, to block radio frequencies, and to, uh, to avoid that uh, blocking distortion occurs. And furthermore, this, this resistor, in, in, in combination with the tube capacitance, uh, forms a low-pass filter, uh, filtering out some uh, squeaky highs. Before we come to the, uh, the first preamp tube of the circuit, we should probably discuss how a tube works. Uh, a tube consists of a number of parts, an anode, a cathode, a heater, and a grid, basically. Uh, and what you do is you heat the cathode, so it emits electrons, and you make sure that the anode is, is uh, charged positively uh, relative to the cathode. So the uh, electrons flow from cathode to anode. Uh, and between cathode and anode you place a grid. Uh, and this grid works as a valve, basically. Uh, it shapes the flow uh, to mimic or copy the audio AC signal that's applied to the grid. So you get a, a larger copy of the grid that goes out on the plate. So the audio signal is then fed onto the grid of the first preamp tube and an amplified copy is transmitted to the anode plate. Uh, and here you can see you've got a number of resistors, plate resistor, cathode resistors and and grid resistors, as we mentioned earlier. And how those are combined and set has a big influence on uh, the gain you get out of the tube stage and, uh, and also biasing. Uh, as you can see on the cathode, you also have a bypass cap and, and those are basically used uh, to roll off Roll off base. Uh, so you, you probably won't find any of those in, in the Super Bass version on this app. Then the signal is fed on to the next preamp, uh, but it first passes through a coupling capacitor, uh, the purpose of which is to block DC and let AC pass. Uh, if DC were to pass here, it would interfere with the biasing of the following. Uh, preamp tube. It would interfere with the relationships between different voltages of the tube, uh, necessary to uh, to keep the tube operating uh, in its optimum, well, the, the linear region.
region, where, where the tube is neither cut off nor saturated. So only AC to pass, only the other signal to pass through the, to the uh, coupling cap. The signal passes through the volume pot circuit of channel 1 and reaches the grid of the second preamp tube. Uh, and yet again, we have an amplified copy transmitted to the anode plate. And this amplified signal is then fed back to the grid of the second stage of the tube. Uh, and then you might expect that we amp the signal once again through the second stage. But no, when it's time for the tone stack, we're, we're actually using what is called a cathode follower, as opposed to a plate-driven tone stack. This is possible since the voltage of the cathode is proportional to the grid voltage. Uh, you can Google cathode follower to see the benefits. I won't go uh, deeper into it here. Uh, then, when we come to the tone stack, it's basically a circuit made up of uh, high pass and low pass filters. Basically a band, band pass filter. We pass another uh, coupling cap to block DC and we feed the signal into the grid of the third preamp tube and get an amplified copy transmitted to the anode plate. And now there is a signal fed to the grid of the second stage grid as well, but we'll get back to that in a while. And yet another cap to block DC before the power stage, and then we pass uh, the grid resistors of the power stage, uh, feed the signal into the grid of the power tubes, and transmit uh, amplified copies to the anode plates. Then the output transformer transforms the signal to signal suited to drive a speaker. And that's, I don't know, maybe 20 volts and a couple of amps and uh, your basic uh, 4, 8 or 16 uh, ohms of uh, impedance. Uh, then the signal is fed back in what's called the negative feedback loop. And here we also have the presence pot located. And contrary to what one might think, the presence circuit rolls off high frequencies. And then that signal is fed to the other grid of the tube. Then the tube amplifies the difference between the two grid input signals, which means that uh, this darker signal you rolled off highs in the presence pot is subtracted from the main signal. So you subtract a dark signal from the main signal and you get a brighter signal. And, and that's how, how we expect the presence to work. More presence. Uh, the output on the two plates are basically identical, but the, they have a 180 degrees phase shift. Uh, I'm not going to explore this any further, but basically this allows for increased tube utilization. Uh, you might want to Google push and pull amps and differential amplifiers and so on. Well, these output signals are then amplified by the power tubes, transformed and fed to the speaker. Uh, and that's basically it when it, when it comes to the audio, audio signal. Uh, there are some additional circuits as well, for instance the biasing circuit. Uh, I'd be glad to address biasing in detail in a separate clip, if you'd like, just tell me. Basically biasing makes sure that the tube operates within its linear area, as, as I, uh, as I uh, uh, br briefly discussed before, to avoid cutoff as well as saturation. And this is done by, by controlling the, the voltage levels of, of the, the relative levels between the grid and the, and the anode and cathode. All right. Um, thanks for listening. Till next time. Cheers.